This is Pat Soundbites Unplugged. Unplugged, the podcast where all the artists go to tell it as it is. Careers, music, tours, and more. And here's your host, the man that refuses to eat squid, Pat Calamari. Hey, Pat Calamari here, host of Pat Soundbites Unplugged podcast. Well, it's a special edition today, Thursday, January 14, 2021, as the rock world mourns the loss of rock, great, legend, bassist, all-around musician, Mr. Tim Bogart. Tim played major roles in great acts as Vanilla Fudge and Cactus, and later in the supergroup Beck, Bogart, and A Piece. And unfortunately, after a long battle of cancer, he passed yesterday at the age of 76. There's nobody closer to Tim Bogart than rock legend and pioneer Carmine Apice. And uh, I am a good friend of Carmine, and uh, we speak pretty much weekly. And Carmine uh, called me today, and he's very overwhelmed, as there's a lot of people that want to talk to him, sending him texts throughout the world to get a sound bite on the loss of his great friend, Tim Bogart. And... Um, we had a brief talk about eight minutes. Carmine calling from his home in Florida, talking about uh, you know his uh, his great friend uh, played in uh, all these bands and how many years he played with Tim and uh, the influences of a great bassist that are here today that uh, looked up to Tim and different things that how Tim played the bass and uh, how the crowd would go into a frenzy when he got into a solo. Really good stuff. So you hear it direct from Carmine Apice right here today on January 14th, the day that we mourn and as well as celebrate the life of the great Tim Bogart. As I always say, live, love, and laugh a lot. Of course, life is way too short. Please enjoy. And uh, if you like, don't hesitate to share this out there. Thanks. Hey, Carmine. Hey, dude. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing okay. How are you doing today, unfortunately? Uh, it's a little melancholy day, and it's a day of uh, remembering a lot of shit. And, uh, you know, I just can't, I'm trying to keep up with all the texts and the Facebooks and the and the calls and emails from everybody about Tim, you know. I, I, I could only imagine uh, when I heard about it, I, I every, like myself and like everybody all think of you. So yeah. so close to Tim with all the bands and everything. Yeah, I realized I really spent a lot more, a lot more um, time I, I, that I thought of, of Tim. You know, because you know I, I've been talking to one of my stations today. They said, "How much time did you play with Tim?" And I started realizing from '66 to like '74, and then from like '81 and the late '80s, I got him to play with Rod. Uh, I'm in the late seventies, uh, and then uh, and then the, then like during the eighties, eighty two, Vanilla Fudge album, eighty two, the album with me and uh, Rick, uh, not uh, the tour with me and Rick Derringer and, and Tim, eighty seven we did a tour, and then uh, in the nineties we did an album with Rick Derringer, did some shows there, and and then started playing with Vanilla Fudge in a, like ninety eight. And then uh, in 99, we toured in G Japan with the Chabo and the Peace. And in 2001, we really got into more Vanilla Fudge and then Cactus in 2005 to 2010. So, I mean, I played with Tim from 1966 to 2010. And that's like, what, uh, 40, 46 years. They take about eight years off. So probably 35 years of my career were playing with Tim. And and worldwide, I mean Japan, yeah, all totally over the place. Everywhere. Europe, world, Japan, uh, America, Mexico, all over the place. What was what was the last work that did he do? Was that the collection of the Led Zeppelin covers out through the indoor no, in two thousand and seven? No, we did. Uh, um, we did the Cactus Records, whatever that was. Uh, two thousand, two thousand. Uh, what was it? No, maybe that was the last. But fortunately, I got him in the studio a year ago yesterday to do a "Stop in the Name of Love" with Vanilla Fudge. 
But we had a problem with the drums, so we put Tim on. We never finished it. But now that I got my studio here, I'm going to um, redo the drums, and we're going to finish it. And it'll be the first, the last thing Tim ever recorded. Wow. And and I got a picture that we did on that day. It's the last photo we and Tim ever did together. And, uh, you know, we'll probably use that as a tribute to Tim, and we'll get that mixed and get it out, you know, as soon as we can. Carmine, what separated him that made him so, I mean, I mean, I'm reading all these tributes. I mean, the greatest bass player around, not even just the greatest bass player, guy had great vocals, outstanding musician. What really separated him when, when you well, first met him? In you, well, you just said it. When I first met him, I was with Mark Stein, and he sang great. Mark sang great and played great, and Tim was the first bass player I ever played with. My other bands always had a left-hand bass on a keyboard. And uh, he was an unbelievable bass player. He played like all the black guys, but then he had all this crazy stuff he incorporated in it. And he sang great. Same with Vinny, uh, the guitar player, Vinny Martell, sang great, played great. Altogether, the band was great. We sang great together, and it was magic, you know? And then as we went on to, you know, we, we worked on really becoming like... Uh, really tight you know he knew when i was going to do a fill and he you know he followed me and i when he did a fill i would follow him and we got to know each other playing so well and he was unique he used fuzz tones he did bass solos like no other bass players did uh, that your audiences did a frenzy and uh you know it was great through all the bands bba vanilla fudge cactus uh uh, it was it was great, you know, really amazing. And, and even when we started up again in, in the late '90s and 2000s, he still did played amazing, and people respected him because he was so unique and different in his playing, you know. I mean, it's it's pretty cool to read so many great bass players out there that said that he was the guy. You know, he was the well, guy you that know, everybody. You know, how, you know how these funky bass players play with their thumb and they pull the string and they play funky like that. Yes, that really started. A lot of people don't notice from Tim, because Tim used to bang the bass in the early like mid sixties with his finger, his thumb, and he'd pull on the strings for an effect. And then Larry Graham saw him do that, and he perfected that into what now became that funk plan you know oh. but it originated from tim wow you know so a lot of people don't even know that as jeff beck said in his uh in his latest uh, text that he sent you know a quote he sent us he said that tim was not recognized for all his achievements basically I, it just floors me just to see how many tributes out there that said that was the guy. There was nobody better than yeah. that guy. He was the pioneer. No. I mean, I'm reading, he was one of the, the pioneer of using distortion with his bass to help cut it through the mix with his low-powered amps of yeah. his of his time, which imparted a very sharp edge sound that nobody ever heard before. Which yep. is like, wow, man. You mentioned in the article, I just read the article, well, I read your piece on Facebook, and obviously the Rolling Stone magazine reposted it. You mentioned, you called him Spock. Oh, they, oh Rolling Stone reposted my piece? Yeah. It, it's I, on, it's, I, I didn't know that. That's, yep, that's it, great. It's on Rolling Stone. They, they put your wow. everything right on it, word for word. And you mentioned you called him Spock, because he was just, yes. the guy knew a very, lot, huh? Very smart. I mean, we used to call him, and I, you could ask him anything, you know, and, and Tim would, would answer you, in some sort of answer, you know. This was, the, this was the guy that, you know, if you were on um, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, he'd be like the phone a friend. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was amazing. Uh, he was amazing, you know. Well, that's... Uh... But I'm getting texts from, I got texts from the New Zealand, the American... Uh, um, New Zealand uh, ambassador Scott Brown who used to be the uh, 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 what is it a senator from Massachusetts he's a big fan of me and Tim you know we played down in Washington yeah, and he wants to talk he wants to call me today and talk about Tim well, I got Nugent send me stuff 
I'm doing a tribute on our Hanging and Banging show in two weeks with Sir Tim, and I got Joe Bonamassa and Warren Haynes, Billy Sheen, Tony Franklin, uh, Jimmy Vivino, and uh, we're going to try and get the Vanilla Fudge guys on there, too. Wow, that, that's a great lineup. That's almost as great as uh, the, Eddie, the Eddie Van Halen group you had. That was yeah, great. Yeah. Boy, that would be a, a great conversation with uh, Tony Franklin and um, Billy Sheen or what they... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it's funny enough, Tony wasn't a big fan of Tim when I met him. He became a fan of Tim after I met him, because I told Tony, I said, you play like Tim Bogart. He goes, I don't know what Tim Bogart sounds like. This is, you know, 1989, you know? Wow. 1988. And then he started listening to Tim and became, you know, more entwined in what Tim has done, you know? So, it's... Uh, Pretty wild. And, Pretty and, wild. And and Billy too. I mean there's those guys well, Billy are... I knew about. Billy I knew about. He's Billy was as always said Tim Bogo was his main influence, period. You know. Well, I know you got your hands full, and I'm going to use our little piece and put it on my podcast and share with everybody. But uh, his uh, his music lives on forever, and certainly our condolences to his family and to yourself and all his bandmates that he's uh, played. And uh, we're just blessed to have your great music that uh, you shared with him with us to uh, get us through, keep us going. Okay, man. Okay, buddy, be safe. And again, uh, hang in there, pal. Okay, bro. Bye-bye.